unleashed in a society that is already segregated on caste, class, community and gender is an extremely dangerous thing. For me and my organization, one of the biggest challenges has been to create a band of peace workers who deal with hate speech. And particularly as a proponent of free speech, the biggest task is to explain to people the difference between free speech and hate speech. And I think this is something that we need to do at a dialogic level, at an intellectual level, at a jurisprudential level. Because free speech is not hate speech and hate speech cannot be justified as free speech. And when I say this, you see worldwide jurisprudence developed even before ours, only recently our Supreme Court has passed judgments. Can I as a journalist proclaim or as a political <coughs> elected official claim free speech to consistently stigmatize and demonize one section of the population? It could be the working sections, it could be Dalits, it could be women, it could be Muslims, it could be Christians. Can I do it? I have Article 19, so I justify it saying that I have Article 19 so I speak whatever I want to speak. No, the understanding is and ought to be that Article 19 has to be looked at in consonance with Article 14, Article 15, 16 and 21. Which means that my free speech terminally affects your right or any section's right to live with dignity and live without discrimination and the right to life itself is affected in Article 21, then I do not have the right to that free speech, quote unquote. And therefore we need to develop these nuanced understandings of uh, the phenomenon we are facing where the public sphere is kind of legitimizing hate speech and hate writing to, the, to, to, an, to, to a shocking degree. And I also believe that we need to work at the micro levels as much as micro levels. Yesterday I was in a meeting in Bangalore and there was anguished sharings from minority community professionals who were saying how in a city like Bang uh, Bengaluru, in residential colonies, you face manifestations of hate which you did not face five years ago and ten years ago. So what do we as a minority, majority owe, owe to the minority sections of our population, be, be, be they be the working sections, be they Adivasis, Dalits, Muslims or Christians? We need to break the silence and speak up. We cannot afford this culture of complicit silence because the majority in this country is too silent. I'm talking about the social majority, I'm talking about the political majority. Maybe they do not subscribe to a hateful ideology, but the silence is giving it legitimacy. And therefore we need to appeal constantly for that silence to be broken. But we need to reinvent different kinds of citizens' actions. Little, little mohalla committees, dialogue committees at the basti level, mohalla level, cooperative society level, building level. We cannot afford to do our activism on the social media alone. I'm not saying that's not important, but we need to do real people's activism, which is being among the people in the classrooms, in our housing societies, in our bastis, in our workspaces, in the courtroom and outside.